A good day to you, sir. I apologize, but Lady Janeth is not currently welcoming visitors. If you are here with regards to her recent marriage, you may leave any gifts or warm wishes with me, and I will ensure she receives them. <coughs> Forgive me. As you can hear, Lady Janeth is indisposed at present. Please come back another time. Do as you wish. Kicking, for goodness! Who says there is a better time, but very well. Allow me to demonstrate. <laughs> so much for peace. Can't slow down. Watch out, Devil. None now so powerfully as Boo.
have the magic touch. I cannot die. Please help me. Uh, but it was good to feel the breeze between the toes. Back to the road. Portrait is ice cold to the touch, filling you with a sense of overwhelming dread. So why is the woman smiling?
Here is the grunting of a swine. Come closer so I can rip out your filthy tongue. Stop this. I love you, Oscar. And I know you love me. It's your gold I love, Hawkwife. But all the riches in Faerun would not be enough to make a life with you worth living. Oh, gods, aid me. He does not mean the things he says. You! Help subdue him, but be gentle. He's not to blame. grateful for your help, but wait. Your face is familiar to me. Yes, I've seen it before in Oscar's sketches. You're the one who saved him from the Zentarim. I used to be. Now I'm his wife. We married not a ten day ago. Things have changed rather a lot since then. Had I known this would happen, I... Oh, who am I kidding? I'd still have married him. Not long after the wedding, he lost his appetite, fell into dark moods. He started to avoid my company entirely. Artistic temperament, I thought. But it worsened. He became violent. Called me some rather imaginative names. I hesitate to say it. Something... Unnatural has taken hold of him. Oscar has been possessed. The last time I left this room, the walls started bleeding, and a portrait of my mother tried to bite me. Flying furniture and screaming portraits I could deal with. But to see my husband reduced to such a state... I can't come within arm's reach without him trying to strangle me. And he calls me such vile things. It hates everyone, but it loathes me. It's not him. I know he would never hurt me. And I promised I would let no harm come to him. As you can see, I've already failed. It's obvious he needs more help than I can give. Please, you saved him once. You must find a way to cure him.
Oscar's behavior began to change shortly after the wedding. He became withdrawn, working obsessively up in his atelier. I tried to take him some food, but I couldn't cross the threshold. It was as though the house itself didn't want me up there. Whatever this thing is, it doesn't want anyone going up there. I swear, it's in the walls, watching. to do exorcisms yet, but feel free to look through Carrion's records. Perhaps you'll find something of use there. Please, Carrie, my darling, listen to me. You brought me here. You did this. Do not interfere. He's coming home with me. Another one who wants to control me. He called me here. Trapped me. Pathetic little childish boy. I only wished to explain myself, to make you see how... No! Enough of your whining! Enough! Selfish, arrogant bastard of an artist! I wanted to be left in peace! I'm here because Oscar wanted me here. 
to make him feel better. Oh, my sweet Carrie. What did I do to you? Save your tears for the ethereal play. What are you saying? You're trying to confuse me. It's so hard to think. I don't remember. Carrie, my sweet meat. I, I just need to know that what you did, that it wasn't my fault. Why am I here? I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be. The spirit's aura flickers, changes. She is confused, lost, dragged here unwillingly by a man who refused to let her leave. Oscar wants the truth. He can have it. We were a fling, nothing more. My decision had nothing to do with him. I did this because I was so fucking sad. All the time. Oscar finds it easier to imagine a world where women kill themselves over him than one where they have their own fucking problems. I'm sorry, Kerry. I had no idea. But I... I was truly not to blame. No. You weren't. So you and your poxy paintings stay away from me! We're done, Oscar. Over. Now let me rest in bloody peace. Gods, what a mess I've made of it all. My sweet Ferelia. I've been a rotten fool, haven't I? And yet you never left my side. It will take more than a ghost to scare me away. Though I wish you'd come to me sooner. I... I'd like to stay. I, I confess I never felt ours was a marriage of substance. I rather thought you just liked me for my art. Throughout my ordeal, I saw how tenderly you cared for me. Even at my worst, you never left my side. Truly, you were the one who saved me. I'm so sorry, my darling. Please, before you go, I must pay you back. Come upstairs to my atelier. I promise you'll leave with something priceless. Immortality. Here he is, the hero of the hour. Brushes are oiled, the canvas prepped, and you... Well, you're comfortable. That's the main thing. So, shall we begin? Wonderful. Stand yourself just there, and... And voila! All it needs now is a name. Something to capture the spirit in which it was created. Certainly the defender of artists. <laughs> a perfect title. Please, take it in for a moment. It's not every day one's face is preserved for posterity. Oh, 
like this. Though you lack a noble rodent on your shoulder. No, it's fine. Who is not offended? Truly, my finest work yet. Well met. What can the Society of Brilliance do for you? Yes, dear Lady Esther, one of our most reliable contractors. Though unfortunately, this particular request was too much even for her. Once the dust has settled on this whole invading army mess outside the walls, I'll find another contractor. Perhaps they will have more success. Was there anything else? I should really get back to my research. Well met. What can the Society of Brilliance do? You don't say. Plurk happens to be upstairs preparing a most unusual paper. I'm sure he'll be pleased to see a friendly face. I assure you, we are as well provisioned an institution as any other you'll find in this city. We simply prefer to keep our wealth away from areas of study. One must stay humble in order to achieve true academic rigor. A most intelligent impulse. But I'm afraid it simply isn't possible. New memberships are on hold for as long as those wretched absolutists are banging on the city gates. It does, however, give you plenty of time to prepare your admission thesis. A brisk 30,000 words should be more than sufficient. Was there anything else? It's hard to explain. I have loud and happy colleagues in my Oh, I miss my spores. I tried eating some toadstools I got from bone cloaks, but no good. Just made me constipated. I wonder what Professor Leinleach really thinks of me. I'm compiling a translation dictionary so warring species of the Underdark can understand each other. It's an essential step forward. So much Underdark strife comes from vying for scarce minerals. I seek to invent new, easier ways to find such ores. From plenty comes peace. Once I publish my paper, proving that it's just hyena mite infections that make Noel so angry, I'll be famous. My surface-dwelling friend. I take it you were curious to see the Society of Brilliance for yourself. The lure of knowledge is a hard one to resist, even where it requires us to endure discomfort. For example, it is quite bright up here. I had forgotten about the malady known as sunburn. A field of research I am glad exists. It will be of immense value for those exposed to it on a more regular basis. As for me, I'll remain indoors. The Society's library will keep me quite busy until I return to my research in the Underdark. We are required to attend the Lodge from time to time in order to present our findings to the Society's members. My research partner prefers to avoid crowds, and so has remained in the Underdark to monitor our Zerkwood samples. I am eager to return myself, but I must prepare my treaties before I depart. Sharing knowledge is one of the Society's most important tenets. The Underused Underdark. 
Applications for Zerkwood in unlocking the future of subterranean civilizations. I may be indulging myself somewhat with its title, but I do believe our research harbors such potential. I only hope the Society's members agree. Uh, speaking of which, uh, uh, I should get back to annotating my references. Uh, is there anything else I could do for you? Maybe a few dead cats. Not a good mix. Employees only pass this point. You want to buy something? Talk to Mr. Sonshul. Ah! Right you are. Head on up then. After it never breaks, won't blow us up. Once it's lit, you can eat. That smoke powder smell. It smells so good. Steady. Faces, hands, and eyebrows. How do we protect them? Watch for wind direction. Put on your gloves. And... A light at arm's length. Very good. And what does Uncle Falogir always say? Once it's lit, you commit. Excellent! Now remember, Falogir's fireworks accepts no liability for singed nails, toasted eyelashes, loss of limbs, scalded torsos, or blown off heads. Now... You there. What can I do for you? You feel an all-too-familiar squirm in the recesses of your mind. He has a tadpole. Aha! Uh -huh. A fellow friend of Gortash. Praise the Absolute. I have a special sample, available just for you, if you wish. This one will be very useful against any and all enemies of Gortash. Be sure to be clear of its explosion area. Please enjoy responsibly. And nowhere near this establishment. Is there anything else I can do for you? What else? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. We're purveyors of smoke powder. Anything that can be lit, flamed, or fired up. Smoke powder is a beautiful mistress. She will not be limited to one form. And she is quite malleable in the right hands. What are you really asking? Friend of Gortash. I see. Then he must not have received my update. You may bring this message to him. Everything is right on schedule. The next batch will be dispatched within a ten day. Exceptional quality, if I do say so myself. The Gondians will know it when they see it. I believe that concludes this purchase order. We very much appreciate Lord Gortash's continued honouring of our humble establishment with his custom. Steady at the mark. Have you tried? Or perhaps... Remember, once... It... And if it's not a fire... He's a bit of a genius, isn't he? At sales, not fireworks. Of course, it helps to have the only licence in town to sell the stuff. Uh, not critical, just a bastard if it breaks. Any torches, matches, wizards, or other sources of open flame, keep them unlit, please. Pressure steady. Are we at temperature yet? Maintaining temperature. Steady at the mark. Steady. Steady. In this spirit, I'll be picking my teeth out of the roof beams. Where's an apprentice when you need one? Done. Employees only, Pastia. If you're expecting any packages, they'll bring them down to you. 
Another friend of Felagir? All right. Just remember the top floor's off limits. Password or not. Looking to buy a little something extra then? to change uh, this barrel soon. <laughs> Pipes are looking a little rusted. Are we scheduled for maintenance? Can't afford a failure on a critical pipe. Uh, not critical, just a bastard if it breaks. Won't blow us up. Steady. Any spillage. Pressure steady. Are we at temperature yet? Where's Maintaining temperature. temperature. Steady at the mark. Done. Eight, nine, ten. Good. All fingers intact. What's the smell? Somehow you are. Where's the steel watch when you're made You're not going to find Uncle Falogier up there. He's literally not alive. Afford a failure on a critical pipe. You don't have permission to be here. Won't blow us up. Pressure steady. Are we at temperature yet? Maintaining temperature. Steady at the mark. As an apprentice when you need one. Dump. Smoke powder has a distinctive olfactory signature. The slightest variance is as detectable as a spark in the darkness and must be put out. Exhausted. Better find. 
find somewhere to camp soon. Not for communal use, it seems. You're being arrested for theft. If you have a defense, make it now. You're free to go. No choice but to keep going. is my happy place. Want another? I have missed this! The adventure, the danger, the kicking of butts! Says Boo! Even a dull blade will break your bones! Nothing important is ever easy. On my way. Don't get too close. Can we fight now? Who is not used to this taking of turns?
She's dead, isn't she? Ethel is dead. Yes! Fuck you, Ethel, you miserable old bat! Fuck you for telling me I'd be an awful mom. That I was nothing but a pregnant half-wit. Oh, and the girl? You saved her too, right? Connor, Ethel is dead. Oh, you didn't change back. You're still a... a zombie. I thought with Ethel gone... Never mind. I'll... I'll find another way to turn you back. Somehow. I know. I know, Connor. I love you. I've loved you since we were kids. And you picked me bluebells and asked me to the summer fair. But you're gone. And this thing isn't you. Not anymore. Then why does it feel so terrible? <sighs> Here. Thank you for killing Ethel. But I'd like you to go now. I'll be fine. I know I'm stronger than this. I just need some time. Well, I will grow strong. Oh, you hear that, baby? Rest until this man is 